Hello, dear friend. Welcome one more time to another Bible study, the series of the, the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Romans. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. I thank you for joining us in this broadcast. I would like to invite you to go to our website, vchurch.us, and from there you will be able to connect with us via Facebook or watch all episodes of this series and many, many more studies and different wonderful videos available for you on the website, bchurch.us. Connect with the YouTube channel, our podcast, the Vimeo channel, and of course, Roku channel and Apple TV channel. We would love that you subscribe to continue watching more of these videos. And thank you so much for being here today. We read from the easy to read version, Romans 16, verses 3 and 4. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, guide us through this study. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, who have worked together with me for Christ Jesus. They risked their own lives to save mine. I am thankful to them. And all the non-Jewish churches are thankful to them. Here in America, we really don't have too much risk for preaching the Word of God. Not now. In the future, we will get there. But this particular portion of the letter talks about the reality of Paul's life. When you study in the book of Acts, which is a beautiful book of history and what happened to the church, the beginning of the church and the apostles and all that, you will find precisely the description of Paul's missionary trips. And it's amazing. It's wonderful information. It's wonderful uh, biblical stories and anecdotes and the power of God in the life of the apostles. Certainly, many of those events were absolutely successful regardless of the problems, but there were some where the apostles died. One of the disciples, for example, at the beginning of the book of the uh, book of Acts, we we find one of them. So Stephen, for example, being the first martyr of the church, and many other stories that you can find there, wonderful stories. Now, while Paul is going to those missionary trips, he finds and meets people people that are received the preaching of the gospel. And some of them, there, there were this couple, Priscilla and Aquila. And um, they were so happy to get to know the Lord. And they immediately fell in love with the Lord Jesus. I don't know. Maybe your story is so different to this kind of stories. But majority of the time, People in their desperation are searching for God. I lived it. Many people that I know lived it. I always say sometimes the struggles in life, your difficulties, your challenges, even being at the edge of death in life, losses, failure, anything. Whatever is the circumstance that forces you to seek God, probably it's not ideal for you to find that way to find God. But regardless, when you finally are searching for God and you find Him and you in, in, you encounter the Lord Jesus, the preaching, the Holy Spirit, the transformation of your life, suddenly you start to fall in love with Him, that changes you. And suddenly, priorities change. Just like that. Priorities change. When your priorities are in the right order, that first you love the Lord above everybody and everything, you find something special in your life. Then you start to understand that what really matters in life is God. In eternity. Because the years that we are going to live here, 
regardless if they are 20, 40, 60, 80, 120. They're going to end one day. And then what? But when finally you have the light, you receive the illumination that Jesus is your Savior, that Jesus died for you, that Jesus is in heaven. He is preparing a home for you. And the life that we have after that is so magnificent and way much more glorious and with infinite joy, eternal life with God. That, when you understand that and you have that as a priority, you see that the rest of the things here are not that important. And with all respect, you even will say, not even people are that important, but God. Now, again, every experience is different. Every person lives this acknowledgement of God in a different way, and personality also affects. Priscilla and Aquila, they were the kind of people that they were passionate. And when they found in the Lord Jesus, the truth, they found that the gospel is the most wonderful thing in life. You know what they say? They said exactly the same thing that I said, and many other friends of mine have said. They said, I'll do whatever for my Lord. I will do with my life whatever is needed. The Lord is my number one. When Priscilla and Aquila came to that conclusion, and they loved Paul because Paul was the tool, right? The instrument. They loved Paul. They had a great connection. And I can imagine the number of meetings they had. Eating together, going places here, there, and talking more and more about God and about things and sharing the same ideals, the same priorities, the same purposes. Let's do something so people will get to know God. Let's do something together. Let's go places and let people know that there is hope for their lives. There is hope in Jesus. That was the life, lifestyle that they had. Now, Paul says here, I want you to say hello to them. I want you to know that thanks to them, thanks to them, I am alive. Because they even put their lives at risk. That is wonderful. I'm talking about people that love the Lord so much that they will do whatever for the kingdom. And when they know that there is someone like them, that they are willing to do anything for God, they say, I am with you. That's loyalty, my friend. You don't find that kind of loyalty today quite often. I did, have, I did find that loyalty in many friends. I have that loyalty in some friends, in some of my relatives, in some brothers and sisters here in America, in Guatemala, the country where I was born, and many other places. Because I have found that it has nothing to do where, uh, about your nationality, race, or anything. It has nothing to do with education or money or if you are old or young. It has nothing to do with that. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of a, a heart. If you have a heart for God, <laughs> you will do everything for the Lord. If you have a heart for God, you, you will work with your minister. You will work with your pastor. You You will support him. When you have a heart for God, you're not going to put limits and say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to give that. No, you, you just say, I'm, I'm all for it. I am so privileged that I have friends like that. In all my life, I have found that. But I will tell you a little secret. When I became a believer, 
I did exactly that for my pastors. I gave everything I could. I served with everything I could. I devoted my life to serve God and support my pastors. And each one of them, they know it. They received my help. They received money. They received my support. And they knew that I was there for them, for the church, with all of my heart. I didn't know that I will become a pastor year later, years later. I never thought of that, but it happened. And you know what happens when you plant that kind of seed? There is a reward. So years later, I found loyalty in many people. I wish you that kind of life. I truly wish that you, my friend, listening today, will have the loyalty and support that the Lord wants you to have. And although the Lord wants that for you, and I wish that for you, it's a matter of a principle. You need to plant the right seed. It doesn't matter if you are going to be a pastor or not. It's not what I am talking about. I'm talking about loyalty. That kind of fidelity that some people have for you is going to be simply the harvest of your loyalty today. I want to encourage you, my friend, to keep planting seeds of love and loyalty to individuals that care for God, that care for God's kingdom. Because when you are working with individuals like that, you are doing what is right. That will bring wonderful results, results for you. So thank you for being here with me this evening. And I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. See you next week. Baby, let's see if you can do this. Yes, search app. G on TV. You got this, honey? It's on. That's right. Man, you're a genius. Old people get so happy with something so simple. By Giancarlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardworth. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Hey, 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 hey. That's all, that's all, that's all, folks. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> Ciao.